What's going on guys? I'm Barry here with the Scry Guys and today we're going to be doing the Merfolk pre-con review and slash throw in a little bit of a budget uh, upgrade situation in there. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. We got Hawkball of the Surging Soul 2 and Simic, Legendary Creature Merfolk Scout. At the beginning of combat on your turn, each Merfolk you control is going to explore. But it also has second ability. When Hawkball attacks, you can go ahead and put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. Uh, onto the battlefield. And then if you don't, you draw a card. So what I like to call commanders like these are commander, uh, commander enchantments, mainly because you really just want your commander to be out there so you can get that ability. Thankfully, it's not an eminence ability. Otherwise, that would have been way more broken. Maybe on part with Edgar Markov. I'm not sure, though. Um, uh, but the fact that each each Murfo you control is going to be able to explore, you can either really thin your deck out by taking all the lands off the top, or you can go ahead and keep one of the non-land permanents on there, or non-land cards on there, and then buff your whole squad and hopefully deal a good amount of damage. Now, in this in this um, video, we're going to be talking about notable reprints. So we're going to talk about the Murfo Lords. We're going to talk about the new cards. And then we're going to talk about the upgraded cards that I would put into this deck at a $50 budget so for our notable reprints we're looking at Thassa God of the Sea to a blue legendary enchantment creature god indestructible but the best thing about this thing is it has scry so we can really go ahead at the beginning of the upkeep sort of look at our top deck or look, look at our card scry you guys know what scry does obviously scry guys come on guys uh <laughs> uh and, and really just thin out you know uh have a good card selection for your hand but this also gives creatures unblockable for two mana which might be uh pretty important since some of these merfolk might get uh big boy chunkies uh <laughs> Let's look at the, oh, um, the, uh, not original <laughs> Mervo Commander, but, uh, the one that's been popular for a long time at this point. One, uh, Kumena, one in Simic Legendary Creature, Merfolk Shaman, tap another untapped Merfolk you control, it gains unblockable, tap three, Merfolk, uh, you draw a card, and then tap five, put a plus one, plus one on each Merfolk you control. Now, in, uh, in the upgrades that I put, we're gonna have ways to untap our creatures so we can really take advantage of this if it's out on the battlefield. We got Herald of Secret Streams, three and a blue. Creatures you control with plus one, plus one counters on them can be blocked. And uh, it, the longer this game goes on, the bigger these boys get, and it's going to get out of hand. Uh, we got Metallic Mimic for two man artifact creature sh uh, shapeshifter. When it enters the battlefield, uh, choose a creature type. It is that creature type in addition, and then whenever a creature type of the chosen type gets... Uh, enter the battlefield it gets another plus one plus one really buffing up the squad even harder and it doesn't say non-token so we do have a fair bit amount of token production into this so that those are just gonna go ham as well look at this look at these prices for these reprints we got eight to nine 67 45 and eight to nine it's just a really good spread in this uh in this deck for as far as uh reprint value goes and i think the big ones are in the next slide we got Kindred Discovery, even though it's reprint been reprinted at this point. See, we had it in Boulder's Gate, we had it in the Enchanted Tales, and we have it now, so about three times for the reprint. It's still holding its price really well just because it's such a popular card for any blue uh, type deck, right? Uh, but Kindred Discovery, if you guys don't know what it does, it uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever the cre whenever a creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield or draws a card or attacks, draw a card. So you're going to be drawing a bunch. Usually, that's how you want <laughs> you want to build you want to uh, build this deck to have this type of card in, just to be able to just keep drawing as much as possible. And then our big money hit for this one is going to be Branching Evolution. It is a doubling season for just plus one, plus one counters. It's two and a green. If one or more plus one, plus one counters will be put onto a creature you control, twice that many are put onto that creature instead. Uh, the price points for these are seven eight dollars for the kindred discovery and for branching evolution It's been ranging about 18 to 21 depending on a uh, condition. So really awesome reprints for this uh, I think really big money ones. Uh, it's worth its price So definitely pick this up uh, If you have a chance to uh, let's look at some of our Murph Lords we got Merfolk Sovereign, one and two blue. Other Merfolk creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and then tap it. Merfolk can't be target Merfolk 
can't be blocked this turn. We also have Marrow Regery. Not sorry I'm saying that right, but it is two in a blue. Other Merfolk creatures you control get plus one, plus one. And then whenever you cast a Merfolk, you may tap or untap a permanent. So that's that's pretty strong. Uh, especially if we, if we get to play some Flash Merfolks out there, we can go ahead and really mess up our opponent's uh, our opponent's situation. Let's uh. Svalen of the Sea and Sky, one and two blue. Uh, it has indestructible as long as you control at least two other merfolk, merfolk which you should. <laughs> but whenever it attacks, you get to go ahead and draw a card and then other merfolk, merfolk creatures you control have ward one. Uh, Modern Horizons two, uh, pretty, pretty good in this one. <laughs> and Kapala, Warden of the Waves, one and two blue. This one pretty much is Ward 2 for spells and abilities. So that's really uh, that's really sick. I like that. Next, we have new the new cards from Lost Caverns. We have Nikanzil, Current Conductor, Simic, Legendary Merfolk Scout. Whenever a creature you control explores a land card, you may put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. <laughs> Tap. Whenever a creature you control explores a non-land card, Put a plus one plus one counter on it so it just gets bigger but it also is going to help you drop a bunch of lands from your hand as long as you have a huge board say you have five merfolk you have seven five lands and two spells and then you keep exploring more lands you get to just drop those onto the battlefield tap this <sighs> This is such a good card because it scales pretty well with the game. Uh, you know, you drop this out, turn three, do your commander on turn four, and then you explore a land, you drop a land, and then for your, for him, you explore, drop another land, and it's gonna go ahead and ramp you up so much faster. But it also gets bigger too. Or even at the end of the game, you're playing him, you have, I don't know, 10 merfolk out, you explore 10 times, you drop, you drop, eight or nine lands onto the battlefield it's it scales so well and it is a uncommon awesome uncommon we have singer of swift rivers one and simic it has flash when it enters the battlefield put a shield counter on another target creature you control and it has you may cast merfolk spells as though they had flash oh i miss you prophet of crew fix <laughs> But this is just pretty much a Vidakan Ori or a Leyline of Anticipation for Merfolk. Definitely want to keep this card into the deck just because then at our, at our turn, we have so many Explore Triggers that can go off just because we've been able to flash in so many Merfolks out there. Definitely a cool card. And then we have Topography Tracker, two and a green. When it enters the battlefield, create a map token, which is an artifact. You pay one, sacrifice it, and you get uh, you get to explore. And you can only do it as a sorcery, which kind of sucks. But if a creature you control would explore, instead it explores, then explores again. It's a it's it's, it's explore monocon. I don't. Know. <laughs> So this means that if you drop this on turn two or turn three, then you drop your commander turn four, you get to explore twice that. So either your creatures are going to get double plus one plus one counters, or you're gonna be able to put a bunch of lands into your hand, either one. It's, uh, <laughs> it is such a good card for any deck that wants to, to really uh, fiddle with the explore mechanic. You're definitely gonna want this to be in that deck and in this deck it it Perfectly fits next we have deep root historian. Oh Which uh merfolk and druid cards in your graveyard have retraced it is three in a green It's a merfolk druid So this is going to give a second life for our merfolks as long as we have a land of this card We can go ahead and cast uh, recast uh, merfolks or druids from our commands or from our graveyard onto the battlefield next up We got oh, these are two new spells from the deck that I am really excited about. We have Bygone Marvels, two green. It has Descend 8, which kind of acts like Threshold, but just with a condition, uh, with, a, with a specific condition. Uh, but this one says, when you cast a spell, if there are eight or more permanent cards in your graveyard, copy this spell twice. You may choose new targets for the copies. 
otherwise you're just going to return one card from your graveyard to your hand and then you exile it so thankfully they put that exile clause on there because then this card can get really busted and abused in just ma in magic in general so uh, <laughs> definitely a great card a great new card for this deck and then we got the card i hail as mono blue t pro <laughs> Ripples of potential potential is one in a blue instant proliferate. So, and then choose any number of permanents you control that had a counter on them. This uh, put on them this way, those permanents phase out. Uh, that's nuts because uh, obviously for this deck, you're really just focusing on the creatures that can get proliferated. But in any type of deck that has any kind of counters in it, whether you're playing uh, Vor Hell, that one that doubles counters on anything. Uh, <laughs> You can proliferate your whole board basically because then you could just proliferate on your uh, planeswalkers on your uh, the, on your artifacts on your creatures and really just save your board now you might not be able to save your board from armageddon unless you've been putting flood counters on your lands uh but this this is mono blue this is mono blue to very t pro and the fact that you can get this back because it doesn't say exile itself is also nuts so you can just recur it and just if you have a steady way to recur this card from your graveyard back to your hand you're 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 a slot in to win but uh, uh an amazing card for this deck next up we got Oh, new uh, still new cards. Wave goodbye two and two blue sorcery return each creature without a plus one plus one counter uh, to its owner's hand. So this is a should be a one sided board wipe. Um, just because your whole deck is focused on exploring. Maybe you don't explore on some certain cards, be, or maybe you don't put plus one plus one counters on certain cards because you're gonna want to bounce them back to your hand and get a second uh, second try at their ETBs. But this is uh, just a upgraded version to, I think, I believe Sleep is a card I kept seeing in Merfolk decks, at least on Arena. I'm not too sure on on Magic, <laughs> on EDH. But um, yeah, this is, it's also kind of dangerous too, because then you could also give other players a second chance on their ETB creature. So if you're going to play this card, I would play it and then try to kill the person that's going to benefit the most from their ETB trigger, uh, their uh and etb creatures and you know um really messing you up for the most part definitely worth a a keep this in your deck this is just for the most part it is a one-sided board wipe and then this is not a new card but you know aetherize is always a funny card to be a three and a blue re instant return all attacking creatures to their owner's hand but this could also save your creatures just in case they have some combat tricks that are going to uh, kill most of your creatures when you thought you had a clear win uh, you know it, it, settle the wreckage which I don't really get to see played as much on e, uh, EDH but uh, definitely could save your creatures from getting exiled or anything like that so uh, a fun card nonetheless then we got these are going to be the cards i would say is going to be an upgrade to this deck we have vidalian hex hatcher one in a blue merfolk wizard flash other merfolk creatures you control get plus one plus one but this also has sacrifice or merfolk counter target non-creature spell unless it's controller pays one now you're going to be like well that's not that great because then they could pay one for that unless you have a card like culture in those souls five mana tap choose any number of target creatures each of those creatures gains persist until end of turn so you can go ahead and sack all your creatures and it, it's almost going to act like a fluster storm and then with Cauldron of Souls, they're going to come back with minus one, minus one counters on them. But because of our commander at, at the beginning of our combat in the next turn, we might be able to go ahead and put plus one, plus one counters on our merfolks to negate the minus one, minus one counters to then again, be able to do this to really control the board in the field. Hopefully we don't die to commander damage when all our merfolk die. <laughs> or an Elish Norn doesn't hit us, but definitely a, a fun little interaction. And some of you might say a Magic Crystal Slam, but Cauldron of Souls is good by itself with, <coughs> without the Vidalk and Hatcher. Uh, we got Low Mage Mentor, one and two blue creature Merfolk Wizard. Whenever a spell or ability you control counters a spell, you may put a plus one plus one Merfolk creature onto the to uh, token onto the battlefield. Tap seven, untap Merfolk you control, counter 
target. So, so not only does this reward you for playing counter magic or counter spells, but it also produces one one merfolks that you can later use to counter more spells to later make more merfolk. Awesome interaction, guys. Uh, I was surprised that this wasn't into the in the pre-con because uh, it's not too much of a price. I think it's like two to three dollars, uh, but definitely one that you want to pick up for this pre-con to really uh, solidify or like to really be able to protect your board, especially the more the bigger your board gets, the more of a threat you do become, obviously, because then these merfolks aren't going to stay one ones and two twos. They're going to explore. They're going to get bigger and then you're going to get more value from these cards or from these creatures being onto the battlefield. So you need a way to protect your board. And this is a great way also because later on to this uh, uh, budget uh, upgrade se uh, section, we're going to have ways to untap our merfolk folk to be able to keep countering spells and keep protecting our board until we get the win and that we have aquatic incursion three and a blue when it enters the battlefield create two one one blue merfolk creature tokens with hexproof but it also has three and a blue target merfolk can't be blocked this turn some of our merfolk are going to get so big that you want to make sure that that damage comes through but the fact that this also comes down with two bodies on it that to then later we can go ahead and explore kind of makes it worth the four mana i definitely wor think it's worth a try out if you're building this deck and then, like I said, we're going to have ways to untap our creatures. Merkfiend leads two and three hybrid Simic creature horror. Other green creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Other blue creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Untap all green and or blue creatures you control during each other player's untap step. So, like I said, if we have low mage out, we're going to untap and to be able to counter control, control the board, control the game that way. And we also have... Marrow Commerce, one in the blue, a tribal enchantment merfolk. At the at the end of your turn, untap all your merfolk. I'll tap untap all merfolk you control, which is gonna be really sweet that this has the type merfolk because on our next slide, we're gonna be able to find a have a way to fetch these cards. Well, at least our Merfo Marrow Commerce. We're gonna be able to have a way to two of these cards onto the top of our deck. And I'm also surprised that these weren't in the deck already just because their price isn't as much as well. Uh, but we have four runner of the heralds, three in a green. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for a merfolk card, reveal it, then shuffle your library, put that card on top. Whenever a merfolk enters the battlefield under your, you, uh, under your control, put a plus one plus one on four runner of the heralds. So that's going to go ahead and tutor it to the top like a sylvan tutor. And then we also have Marrow Harbinger. Three and a blue creature merfolk wizard island walk. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a merfolk card, reveal it, then shuffle your library and put it on top. These are just merfolk. These are just merfolk tutors that um, that really fit well into a budget build of this deck. Obviously, if you had the cash, you're gonna go ahead and want to just play you know a worldly tutor, a sylvan tutor. Uh, but you know we're on a budget, and these are I think really great budget cards, and also they're on the battlefield you're gonna get to explore with them so they're really pulling double duty with our commander out onto the battlefield because it's gonna be able to put that merfolk into our oh onto the top of the library and then you're gonna be able to buff your whole squad and then hopefully draw into it next turn to really take advantage of that whole situation and uh, Another upgrade I would like to put in this deck is Tribute to the World Tree. Three green. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card if its power is three or greater. Otherwise, put two plus one plus one counters on it. So this is really just to buff up our, our creatures even more too. So they can really just start off at three, three. A uh, really good, great card. Um, if you have the budget, also add in Guardian Project so you just draw those cards. Uh, but for this deck, I, I wanted to balance it out with drawing cards and then also really uh, taking advantage of the explore mechanic. You know, you might at some point draw yourself out. So that's pretty, uh, that's a pretty scary thought. And then one of the more notable reprints, I believe for, oh yeah. And then these are other upgrades I wanted to put in here. Azusa Lost But Seeking, just because if we're gonna explore so much, we're gonna have so much lands in our hands. We're gonna wanna find other ways to drop those lands onto the battlefield. I know, I know someone's gonna be out there like, it's not a merfolk, man, but like, 
the value's too good and it's only like two to three dollars really fits nicely in a budget build now this is the big money card that i wanted to put in here and it's not a budget it's, it's the budget here is 50 bucks it tips it a little bit over 50 but you gotta put ac tyrant of the guy straight in here right <laughs> it's gonna let you go ahead and play an additional land but then whenever you play an additional land you get to draw more cards um also it's just a big target for removal so if you play this and you're able to at least keep it around for a turn or two after the explorers be able to drop drop some lands play some cards it's just an all-around good simic card i know some of you guys are gonna eye roll at this like oh, oh of course he puts that in there but you know it's also kind of on theme so <laughs> and uh this is probably the most notable land I think they put in here, Alchemist Refuge. Uh, and it's going for Simic Colors, you can tap it, and non-land cards this turn. Uh, you may cast non-land cards this turn as though they had Flash. Just a really solid, uh, really solid land. I feel like I don't see it played as much as I think it should. But, you know, definitely a good card. To, nice little reprint they have in here. I think it was for a little bit going for 5 bucks, but now it's like down to 250 so really nice and i believe this is the card i had to take out for sure uh zelatoyak the smiling flood four and a simic a salamander serpent legendary creature when it enters the battlefield or attacks put a flood counter on target land that land is an island in addition to its other types as long as it has a flood counter on it at the beginning of your end step untap each permanent you control with the counter on it now it's really good but it's also pretty vulnerable at six mana i think i like the merc uh merc fiend liege a little bit better just because it not only does it um untap our creatures at the beginning of each end step or upkeep but it also buffs our creatures up a lot so that kind of does matter uh this is six mana six six which is good and you could also possibly untap your lands but then after that then you just have flood counters on your lands but i, <laughs> I know some of you're gonna be like how are you gonna take them out no not the smiley salamander but uh I definitely would like to see this as a commander deck. Uh, I think it's a pretty interesting thing, especially when you're able to stride like resonator, it's uh, triggered abilities. Uh, <laughs> and you can really take advantage of being able to untap your lands at the end step, uh, at your end step. I think it's a really cool card. I just don't think it fits in this deck. I think, uh, I think I took Zola attack out for AC cause uh, AC is just, it's AC. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah i had to mention uh, me taking this card out but um uh definitely guys check out my architect uh deck tech link down below it's gonna have a full breakdown of the budget uh, of the of the upgrades i made to the deck in different sections i have a section where i took out the cards that are from the pre-con and then i have a section for the upgraded cards that are under 50 dollars, and i have a little small section for like big budget upgrades if you have the budget to make that work or you know you could proxy it but uh <laughs> But definitely go ahead and give that link a check out if you guys want to see a full breakdown of this deck. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we appreciate you guys. Have a good day.